So, the uh, Raw Show Monday. Did you watch this show, Tom? I did. All right, feel free to jump in. We're going to get this thing here done. So, uh, Sammy came out. They're in Quebec. Place went nuts for him. He just let them cheer him for five straight minutes, they cheered. And then finally, the uh, Judgment Day music hit. They came out. They surrounded the ring. Sammy said, listen, before you do what you're going to do, do you really think I came here of all places alone? And Kevin Owens' music hits. He returns. Massive pop. They lay out all the heels. And then Kevin says, been too long since I've had a match on Raw. Tonight, how about Sammy and I face any two of the Judgment Day? Which led to a show-long storyline of Priest and Finn arguing over who the two men should be. And at the end of the day, when they did the match, they did a uh, one-minute match that went to a stupid DQ. And then they added Cody Rhodes and Dom to the match. And it was a much more... It was a much higher star power match in the end. Which they could have announced at the beginning of the show, but they didn't. They had to do this goofy storyline instead. So that was the opener. So in storyline, Finn and Priest were both vying to have the weakest link of the team as their partner in yeah. the main event, rather than wanting to team together two main eventers. Yes. They'd rather have Dom as their partner. Yes. Who, clearly, that didn't turn out to be a good choice. No, it didn't really. Because in the end... Yeah. The one member of the uh, Judgment Day in the match that's a champion left looking anything but... We had Riddle and Drew versus the New Day. If the Chop and Roll Express ever have another match, this is the match we're going to have. Drew ran wild for a moment. He tagged in Riddle. Riddle did a bit. Then he got cut off. And then they did the old tease the hot tag. And they teased it and they teased it and they teased it. And right when Riddle was going to get it, Eric of the Viking Raiders yanked Drew off the apron. Drew never got the hot tag. And then Kofi tagged in and hit Riddle with Trouble in Paradise and pinned him. If I can work matches like Drew McIntyre did on this show, I'll come back anytime you want. And then the Viking Raiders took out Drew, went after the New Day, but Drew returned, and he beat them all up, laid them out by himself. And this is somehow leading to the Viking Raiders versus the New Day, even though they cost Drew McIntyre the match. That's the end game. Yeah, that's what they're doing next week. And then the New Day said, after we beat the Viking Raiders, you guys can have a rematch if you want it. Because you should be a team, they said. Even though last week, and also during this match, they ridiculed Riddle and Drew for not being a real team. But they said they'd be a great one. Because you know how it is, Tom. It's like, you don't like somebody, and then you get in a fight with them, and then if you beat them, all of a sudden you're like cool with them. Oh, man, yeah, you know, anytime you want to come train here, yeah, go ahead. But if they'd have beat your buttocks you'd be like i hate that guy still he cheated well we were having a rough time on the my... show for a little bit and then uh we had that match the intergender tag match and i annihilated you you didn't annihilate me you barely won i'll admit you won but you barely won and i got the two-point takedown to start the match then we had jd mcdonough and finn balor they're having an argument. Or actually, actually, JD and Finn are fine, but then, you know, up comes Rhea and Dom, and they're like, we need to talk about which guys we're going to use. And, but JD, you know, you creep. You're not allowed to come. And so Finn said, well, I'll talk to you later on. Shayna did a video package, which she's, uh, I mean, she was a baby face, you know, when she beat Ronda, and she was a baby face the next week when she was all beaten up and still wrestled. But uh, she's listed as a heel on the internal roster and if you watch this video she's clearly going to come back as a heel when she returns then we had gunther and chad gable for the intercontinental title this match was great they pummeled awesome. each other it was physical there was great wrestling and finally at the end contrary to dave Meltzer's claim last night in fact chad posted him gave him a german suplex over the barricade into the timekeeper area and then he hit the ring at nine. He beat the count. Chad Gable beat Gunther via countout. He did not win the Intercontinental title. But uh, they will be rematching, I'm sure, at the pay-per-view. And they'll probably add some sort of stip or something like that. 
The and, first time that Gunther has lost a singles match on the main roster. Yeah. So Chad Gable up there with, I guess, who Cody Rhodes dumped him out in the Rumble. And that would be about it. You know, so. it is uh, it is amazing everything people say about Vince and Hunter and how they're exactly the same. When Vince was in charge, Gunther couldn't even get a look on the main roster. The second that guy's gone, they called up Gunther and they never beat him. He still has not been pinned that entire time. And he's going to end up beating Honky Tonk Man's record for the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion of all time. Are they going to bring out Honky Tonk Man for this? I don't know. I think he should be there on that day. Can you trust him? That's the issue. That guy would go into business for Listen, himself. I hung around Honky in like the year 2000. You don't have to worry about Honky. Was he going to go and shoot on Gunther? I don't think that's going to happen. Then we had uh, Byron Saxon interviewing Cody. They went out in front of the people, and Cody basically said he was going to keep an eye on things tonight. This was like when a presidential candidate comes out and introduces their vice presidential running mate. He was like, oh, tonight it's not about me, guys. It's about Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Let's hear it for him. Then we had uh, the best thing on the show by Miles. The Shinsuke Nakamura video package where he was going to tell us what he whispered, what sweet nothing he whispered in Seth's ear last week. And he did the promo. Here's another one you'd never see with Vince. They let him do the entire promo in Japanese, English subtitles. His 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 promos in Japanese, like, I don't know what he's saying. Actually, I do because they had subtitles. But, man, he was awesome. His delivery was great. He came off like a movie villain. Oh, yeah. And he basically explained... What could I have said that filled Seth with such fear? Well, he's got it all. He's a champion, but I know his weakness. He says, I whispered to Seth, I know about your back. And they reveal that Seth has had a broken back for years. Four he years. says he lives in pain. His pain has created a void that nothing can fill. No matter how successful he is, he's in pain. When he hugs his wife, he's in pain. When he picks up his child, he's in pain. And now his worst fears are coming true because I can break him once and for all. We both live by the same code, the and Bushido then, code. Yes, they show Seth's back yes. with the kanji yes. on his spine. The Bushido code in Japanese on his back. He said, your body is crumbled under the pressure of your own vanity. Are you satisfied with, you, with what you've done with your life? I will not be satisfied until I remove that burden and break you once and for all. Watch your back. They need to bring up the fact that Nakamura feuded for that world title for like a year against AJ Styles, and he never beat him. And that's what he wants is that title. This was awesome. Then we had uh, Rhea killing Candice. And then Raquel came out on crutches, threw down the crutches, beat up Rhea. So it is Raquel and Rhea at the pay-per-view. Ciampa vows to become a top guy. We had a Miz promo bearing LA Knight. And then it's Miz versus Akira Tozawa with L.A. Knight out there at ringside. And Miz is constantly distracted, but he doesn't, you know, get pinned like they normally do. And finally, at the end, he's beating Tozawa, gets the knees up on the senton. And uh, he yells at L.A. Knight, this is for you! And Tozawa cradles him and pins him. And then Knight hit the ring and laid him out with the BFT. The first singles win by Tozawa, I believe, since he beat Neville... Oh, my God. For the cruiserweight title? Well, that's not counting as 24-7 title wins, I'm sure. I don't know what kind of matches those are considered. No. Are they, those are certainly not singles matches, are they? Uh, I guess maybe they're not. But anyway, they'll face off at the pay-per-view. Riddle celebrating. By the way, we didn't review SmackDown. I only got a moment to mention this. But my God, that I, listen, I love L.A. Knight and all. He's over. But that match he had with Theory was such a... 1992 WWF superstars throwback. Nothing happened in match, dude. I was like, oh, my God. And I don't have high hopes for uh, Miz and LA Knight, I got to say. So Riddle celebrating with Drew. We had the deal we talked about earlier. Becky came out for a promo, and then Trish and Zoe show up. And long story short, they've got a cage match in the pay-per-view, and next week it is Becky and Zoe Falls Count Anywhere which I would not be surprised if Trish interfered and Zoe beat her. 
leading to Becky beating Trish at the pay-per-view. We had Caden and Katana versus Chelsea and Piper. Literally, the story is that, like, Chelsea can't do anything. She's completely useless as a wrestler. And then Piper tags in and just kills two women by herself, which is what happened here. They're the tag team champions officially because Piper just walked up and took a belt and declared herself champion. Okay, because we didn't that's talk about world championship wrestling. We didn't talk about SmackDown, but they had Charlotte and Bianca Belair team together, and they were all chummy. They were buddy buddy. Just give them the belt. They should be like somebody. Honestly, sh- it's just a story they're telling. But my God, there's eight thousand teams that could do better than Chelsea and Piper. Bianca and Charlotte. Yep. That's one hell of a team. Yep. Except Charlotte had a... Actually, it wasn't even Charlotte's fault. It was Io's fault. For those that watched that match on Friday, it's poor Charlotte. I know people hate... Brian, I hate when you say poor Charlotte. Well, in this case, Charlotte's supposed to be crawling to the corner, and she's, oh. supposed, she's supposed to get really close, and Io's supposed, uh, to, bra- supposed yeah. to break it up. But Io totally forgets, and Charlotte's like, where are you? And so Charlotte has to just collapse and not make the tag, and then Io's like, ah! I'm supposed to be over there. And she runs over and cuts off. I was I was dying. And then people were like, did Charlotte have a concussion? Charlotte looked horrible in there. I was like, bro, if you don't like Charlotte, that's fine. This was absolutely, totally not her fault. But Io didn't know what to do. Every once in a while, Charlotte does a move that I'm like, well, you could have put a little more effort into that one. But for the most part, I mean, Charlotte's a damn fine wrestler. Back in a moment, we'll do the final two segments of Observer Live. Anyway, uh, final two segments, Seth promo. You know, the thing with Seth, every week I say the same thing. When the guy is actually serious, I mean, he cut a great promo about how, you know, do whatever you want, you know, go after my back, it's wrestling, but man, don't bring my family into it. But man, he opens a promo, showed up in his outfit, he's laughing, he's dancing, asking the people to sing his song, which really they didn't do much in uh, Quebec. And then he cuts a serious. Then he gets serious mode, cuts a serious promo, and he concludes with, "I'll see you face to face next week." In my silly outfit, while the people sing my song, I'm like, "Well, you seem real mad, brother. Can't get into it." And then Finn and Priest versus Sammy and Kevin went to a DQ when JD tries to throw the briefcase in, but Sammy grabs it and hits Finn. Finn in this briefcase is the feud of the year. I'm voting for that in the Observer Wars. Finn versus the briefcase. And then Cody came out, and then we had Cody, Kevin, and Sammy versus Finn, Dom, and Priest. And it was a um, house show match, you know? They just did a match, got some heat, babyface made a comeback. Finally, they triple team the heels. uh, And then uh, Balor gets hit with the crossroads. Dom gets hit. Sammy hits a running boot, tags in Kevin, hits a stunner. One, two, three. Fans cheer. Better luck next time, the baby faces say, and we go off the air. So, uh, that was it. Pretty simple show. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.